guys, so today we're going to be making fireballs! Uh, this is a technique that that Rouge cosplay taught me um, because unfortunately I tried the clear wobbler and just couldn't get on with it. Um, so this is lighting gel, sort of um, it's acetate and it's quite floppy to begin with but when you heat it up it actually retains its sort of shape and becomes a bit more stable. Um, so what you will need for this is some kind of light, so this is just a little LED push light, um, you can use things like fairy lights, anything battery operated is going to be a bit more easier, I just found that this fit in the palm of my hand, so perfect for a fireball. Uh, you will also need a bulletproof mat, you will need some acetate, now this is sort of um, the things you get in uh, theatre productions, in photography, it Sort of, it's heat pr heat resistant, um, but once you heat it to a certain degree, it sort of as I showed you, it becomes a bit more stable. So I've got sort of a, a yellow, sort of an orangey one, uh, a bit more orange, and red. Um, it's basically a mixture of fire colours. You can use any colours for any particular kind of flame effect. Um, so I'm going to do a blue one for Loki at some point. Uh, you will also need a heat gun. You can probably try a hairdryer, but it's probably not going to be hot enough. Um, we need a blue gun and some glue sticks. And I'm going to try something a bit different with this light because it's very bright. Um, so I'm going to try sanding it over. Um, to diffuse the light a bit, so it's not quite so uh, Tony Stark laser beam. So, should we get to it? So what I'm going to try first is I'm going to sand the top of it to diffuse the light, and I'm also going to sand the sides, because what I found with this is uh, the light, the LED light, actually kind of shows through. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is paint it with a red um, to try and sort of blend it in with the flame a bit more. So give it a go. Okay, so as you can see it's it's slightly more muted now, which means hopefully it should look less like I've just chucked a light onto my hand. Um, and what I would suggest is taking the batteries out before you paint it. She says, and get it undone. Um, and don't paint this bit because you don't want it to stick together and you want to be able to change the batteries. Okay, so I am using a, um, it's a plaster coat fast dry paint. Um, for the moment I'm only going to paint the base. if it's got brush strokes or anything because hopefully this part won't be seen it just means that it blends in a bit better um, with the rest of it so I'm going to set that aside to dry so the next bit um, is to cut them into um, segments so that you can then glue them on to your fireball so we found that triangles whilst they do work don't give the best shape the best shape comes from just wavy segments um, shorter is probably better, sort of this length is quite stable, um, obviously the longer it gets the less stable it's going to be um, and for ease of packing your prop you probably don't want a massive fire, well you might want a massive fireball, you never know. Around sort of making them narrower at the top and slightly wider at the bottom means you've got a slightly better base to be able to stick your flames onto as well. Um, I also found out that it is easier to separate your colours, sort of once you've cut one set, put them off to one side and put a different pile for each colour because sometimes they all start to blend in and you get confused as to which layer you should be on. Separate your colours out first, it's easier. I 
I've also made some shorter ones because um, I'm going to try and build up around the edge of the push light um, to see if that gives a sort of more filled out effect. Okay, so the next bit is the heat gun, so uh, just be careful with it, obviously use a heat proof mat, um, don't have anything near you that is um, plumbable, be careful. Um, once the heat is applied, it takes a little bit to get them going because obviously they are heat resistant, but um, they go very quickly, so it's sort of keeping the balance between blasting it with heat and pulling back and letting it sort of naturally just degrade. Um, the, obviously the acetate itself gets very hot, um, so obviously just be careful. This is on a low setting at the moment. It's obviously not really doing much but later on when the heat gun becomes a bit hotter and you obviously your heating mats heated up it will sort of add to the effect so I'm gonna chuck it up on high for now but I'll probably pull it back okay so as you can see it's gotten stiffer it's still a bit hot um, but it's shriveled, it's sort of got that nice flame effect. Um, so yeah, just uh, repeat. I now have little orange flames. Um, one lot down, several more to go. Okay, so now we've got our flames of all different colours, shapes and sizes. And this is all sort of dry, so we can start putting things on. Um, so what you're going to want to do is get the glue gun and you want to start from the middle out and you want to start with the yellow moving to the sort of goldy colour to the orange to the red um, and you also need to leave sort of a finger length gap so that you can push your mechanism um, on this one it's there so I can literally just pop my finger in pick it in and off Um, sort of work with the shapes you've got as well. This one sort of leans towards one side, so I'm going to put it there so that it sort of I don't have a massive gap, but I've still got enough room to put my finger through so it doesn't look too unnatural. So, so you just sort of try and guide your flames around where you where you need your fingers to go. And if you don't think you've got enough room, you can always sort of chip into it, just sort of at the base. so that you've got enough room to pop your finger in. Okay, so as you can see, I'm slowly building up the layers. So I've got the yellow, the gold, and the orange. So it's just the red left to do. So if they're not sitting as well as you like, you can always heat gun them again, just to sort of get the shape the way you want it. So 
that's going to sit a bit better in there now. One. Be a bit careful. Sort of melt it into it so that it's not sticking out. So just be a bit careful with it. That'll keep it in there a bit better. Okay, so pretty much got it covered. Um, I'm going to have to clip some of the edges just because I've gone a bit too far. And I would like to get the batteries back in there. Right, so this is the finished flame. Obviously the light is still quite bright in there. So what if I would probably do when I make low keys is I will do like a just a thin wash of paint over it just to stop it from being quite so harsh um, but as I've got some things left over I might do what I did with my other one which is just sort of crumple it up and just pop it in there so that it diffuses the light even more just so it stops it from being quite so harsh So just be very careful as this is going to be very hot and sort of builds up a core just to sort of mute it a little bit and you can still get in there and press it in on and off okay so the light in is it's still quite harsh what I might try is just a carefully sort of adding a bit of paint possibly with a sponge just over the light, just to sort of um, dim it a little bit. So what I'm gonna try and do is use an acrylic and a sponge. You don't want it too thick so that it runs onto all the, um, you want it to run into the mechanism, so basically. Sort of dab it on just to make it a lot less harsh so it's a sort of more gentle light because it's got a layer of red on um, so obviously probably try doing that first um, you don't want too thick a layer just enough to sort of cover it and this is the finished product so you've got a hole in the back so you can turn it on and off. I'm more happy with the shape of this one. So we compare it to the original, which, you know, not too bad for a first attempt, but you can quite clearly see the blue light underneath, and it's just, um, this one's a bit more natural, a bit more muted, and a bit more fiery. So, pretty chuffed. Uh, I hope this has been helpful to some people, and um, I look forward to using these in the next con. Bye guys!